Good afternoon, everybody. How is everybody doing? Um, <clears throat> get that volume turned down just a little bit, enough that we can hear me going on. All right, that looks good. How is everybody doing this afternoon? Um, had some interesting news. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to share it. Um, because it's not great news, and I don't like to share great, not great news. Like, I want people to be happy, and that means sharing with them the things that are happy. Not the other way around. Okay, so today, uh, I decided to throw a little bit of a wrench in our plans. Instead of flying in Europe, we're going to do a quick jump from ACI to Dallas Love so we're going to be heading south today uh, into Texas. And it's going to be an interesting little flight because we've got some overcast. We've got a little bit of weather. Um, we're gusting 24 knots of winds in Dallas. That's going to be interesting. We might wind up with some rain before departure. I'm not sure. But uh, I thought that might be a little more interesting than flying in Europe would be. So... Let's get started, shall we? All right, let's start with our overheads. We're gonna get batteries one and two going and on. Recorder ground control is set to auto. External power on. Fuel pumps all off. Fuel load, okay, so now we need to grab our flight summary. We need our flight plan. Fuel is 6205. I'm just going to do straight up 62 because I can't put the 05 and it doesn't make sense to bring another 100 kilos of fuel that I don't need when I only need 5. Okay, and let's go ahead and load our passengers. Passengers are going to be 98 today. Bring them forward a little bit. Try and get a little bit better center of gravity. Uh, and then we're looking at two tons of cargo. All right. Ooh, nice. Straight up 25%. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so that's fuel and cargo loaded. Chat, so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, um, APU fire test. That's a pass. APU master switch on, and then while we're waiting for our uh, flap open message, let's turn up the brightness on our ecams, on our mic dudes. On our MFD, ND, flap open, APU starting. Get the first officers, ND and PFD turned up. Perfect. All right, and so that gets us our cockpit lights and mic deuce flap lever, match ecam, speed brakes retracted. Uh, probe and window heat to auto. Air conditioning panel, no white. When available, we can throw on that AP bleed. Our cross bleed is set to auto. Air conditioner temp as required. We're not really going to worry about that. Uh, we do have passengers, but, you know, I'm me. And this is a simulated aircraft, so we're going to simulate everybody being happy. Um, okay, generator one and two, fault light check on, uh, external power off, all other lights off, ventilation, no white, all lights off, preliminary pre-flight procedures complete, pre-flight procedures adheres to nav, strobe lights set to auto, wing lights on, Nav and logo to system one. 
Heat belts on. No smoking to auto. Emergency exit lights armed. The wifey is aboard. Well, you better get your seatbelt on because I just turned on the seatbelt sign. So uh, make sure your seat belts and your seat belts are fastened. Your t tray tables are in their full upright and locked positions. Uh, seat belts, no smoking, emergency exit lights, landing elevation set to auto. Um, pack flow should be at low. Uh, fuel pumps all on. Engine 1 and 2 fire test. Engine 1 pass. Engine 2 pass. And now we get radios 3, 2, and 1 on. BRB real quick. You can't BRB. The, 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 the no, the, the seatbelt sign is on. You are not free to move about the cabin. Okay, let's set up our McDo. So, data, our air act cycle is way out of date. That's okay. And so we're going from KMCI to Haydal. Here, flight number SWA55, Southwest Flight 55. This is a real world flight, however, they normally do this in a Boeing 737. Uh... Obviously, I don't feel like flying a 737. I'm flying the A319 because it's my payware aircraft, and it uh, it make me happy. Let's take a look at our top of cruise. is going to be at 380. Load our winds. All right. Flight plan. We For this, we use... Uh, I, I was actually taught this by a real-life Airbus pilot. Uh, they use a procedure called diff sips. You go data, initialization, flight plan. Secondary flight plan, initialization, performance, progress. So that's how you remember the, the path by which you go through the McDo and do your setup. We're going to be departing runway 19 right via racer 7 make sure yeah racer seven however since this thing only has such an old air rack cycle unfortunately that means we have to pick racer five it's probably gonna be the same and we're going to doza okay and then from doza we're gonna go to Itug. And then we're going to do destination arrival. We're going to be coming in on Arnav 13 Whiskey. 13 Right Whiskey. We're going to be taking table three from Winop. Yes, Winop. You win up. Then I don't think we have a transition here. Yes, he tug. Insert. remember Cuban. Hold on. That's not. Here's my level. Oh yeah, Cuban. Okay. Okay, Cuban finger, slant, middle. It says manual. We're not going to go manual. We're going to go straight to win up. 
I'm actually going to remove that because that would be some place where normally we would get uh, vectors. And we're not going to get vectors here. I'm gonna look at the flight plan. Zoom in. Move this manual here. Move the... There, perfect. We're coming from MTI. Perfect. Okay. Init B, this is where we're going to need our Tolis plugin. We're going to do a Flaps 2 departure. Our zero fuel weight is going to be 52.6 tons at 25.0%. Block fuel is going to be six point. Perfect. So we're going to need that plug in, Iraq. All, right. all right, we're going to take flaps two departure. E one is one five two. V rotate is one five two. V2 is 154. Flaps are going to be 2 slash up 1.1. 1. 1. <clears throat> and the flex temp is going to be 63 degrees. Progress will be 2K now. All right. Perfect. That is our MCDU set up. That's our pre-flight procedures completed. Push back and start procedures. We need to get our, uh, do an H here. We need to get our, uh, our, um, nope, we need one, two, two points. This is Kansas City INTL Information Whiskey. 2218 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 33. Dew point 21. Wind 180 at 17. Altimeter 2972. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. Thank you. No worries, Bard. I appreciate the host. Thank you so much. Nine seven two. That is some low air pressure. Okay. <clears throat> okay, flight directors both on. Speed is in managed mode. Uh, heading will be once our IRS aligns. So now I need to look at my departure and get my cleared. Okay. Cool, I will absolutely do that as soon as I get off stream. Uh, so I need to look at my departure. And take off all runways, climb ass assigned heading for radar vectors to appropriate route. Expect filed altitude 10 minutes after departure. Those a transition from over MCI Vortac to MCI Radial 190 to Doza. Which means just straight up 10. Uh, looks like I do not have any, not have any restrictions. Can I just unrestricted climb? I think that's exactly what it's telling me. Hold on.
any other standard departure? Looks like I have absolutely no restrictions, so I can go straight up to 380? Yeah, 380. Total unrestricted climb. That is fantastic. Oh, Street Taco. Okay. Alright, we need to wait here at the gate for um, catering to get here. <laughs> Yeah, that, I think that's the best part of working from home. You get to you get to have that sort of thing for uh, dinner without uh, having to stop. All right. So we have our uh, alt altimeter set. Heading is dashed. Cleared altitude is set. Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder, we're not going to worry about because we're not flying online. Set our beacon to on, and then we can call for pushback. Pushback and engine start procedures completed. All right, so this time we need to go other way. Round of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Ground to start cockpit. that pushback. Toe is driving up. Now, if I remember correctly, I should actually now have uh, I think six. Yeah, so that should be the flight director off now. I should be able to do that on approach. Back, wifey. Welcome back. Oh, I see. Kenda gets a taco. I don't get a taco. I want a taco. And I'm a lot closer. You don't have to reach as far. I mean, not that I wouldn't share with my wife if, you know, she were here. Okay, so we shouldn't do that quite as much anymore. Switch to this. I can't come get some. I don't have a car. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Wish I told you. All right, so they are ready to connect, which they will do quite on their own. They don't need any help from me. Not yet. Can we just invent a way to fax food? No, don't fax food because, look, I have worked with fax machines even with all the modern technology in the world. They still can't get the, the like, you get streaks. It doesn't scan right. It doesn't print right. It None of it is correct. So let's not fax food. Let's email so food. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. All right, we're going to release that parking brake and then hope that it doesn't send Starting me spinning. And you may start engines. All right, we may start engines. Engine to ignition and engine two set to start. I'm going to wait for 25% into rotation. This pushback is going to be super short, so I may not even have both engines started. Oh, so you'd order a taco and it'll send you a taco salad from shredding it up. Yeah, basically. You'd end up with a taco salad. You'd have missing uh, missing sauce. Um, I mean, let's be honest. That's not really different from going to fast food nowadays. But uh, that's because nobody's got, um, you know, pride in their work anymore. Ooh, engine switching mode normal. Engine one starting. We have a positive start engine two. The sauce would just stay in the machine. You'd have to spend all the money from the sauce on buying new printer cartridges. So you get no sauce. Actually, you'd get sauce and no meal because you'd have to pay for the, the print cartridges. All right, so that's positive start. Engine one, engine mode selector set to normal. APU bleed off. Ground spoilers armed. Flaps set for takeoff. 
pitch trim set for takeoff. That's going to be up 1.1. Which, ironically, I have to scroll down to get the pitch trim to adjust up. 1.1. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking brake set, sir. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Okay, pitch trim set. Engine wing and anti-guys as required, which it shouldn't be. Uh, APU master set off. HP sauce jet printer. <laughs> the meat would be a paste. They've tested that, and it actually is a paste. Like, it's it's weird. They, they, they actually have 3D printed food. Scrolling down makes sense because you're pulling back. Yeah, it's just here, and 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 honestly, I'm scrolling down, but but see, okay, yeah, 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 because it's moving that wheel, not the. See, I was thinking it's it scrolls this, so I'm like, but if I scroll so down, it it's gonna go and down. Pen has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll on the right. See you next time, and have a great flight. Homemade carnitas tacos with street style with slow roasted pork so shoulder. I mean, slow roast, you pressure cooked it. Like, you know, that's not roasted. Shredded cheese, black beans, queso fresco, and roasted corn. You make me hungry. All right, there's our signal. All right, nose wheel light set to taxi. Uh, park brake off, elapse time run. Why? Why were you all already running? There we go. Alright, flight control check. Full up, full down, full right, full left. Brake check. Brakes are working. Alright, now... Low cooker for 10 hours, then an extra... Yeah, that's that's not roasting. Like, you seem to have a fundamental misunderstanding of what the word roast means. Uh, flight controls are checked. FMA should be nav and climb. Uh, auto brake set to max. We're going to take a left here. And then take Bravo to Alpha 1. We don't need Terminal C because Terminal C doesn't function anymore. It hasn't in years. There's Bravo. We're veering off the taxiway. Also important to match the direction of the wheel, otherwise you cause brain you just cause brain ache. Yeah. I've also reset my my brake to uh, the brake that I have on my trigger. I've reset that to regular brakes instead of to hard brake. And to say slow cooked. Well, it was slow cooked and then pressure cooked. So it was both. But primarily, yeah, slow cooked. Just roasted is a very different thing. You, you need uh, convection heat for that. And you don't get that in a, in a slow cooker. Alright, so auto brake is set. Terrain on ND as required. It's not really required. We don't have any mountains around KCI. Uh, we can call the purser and take off config check. Ecam no blue. Taxi procedures complete. We're ready for our uh, t for takeoff procedures. And we're going to go ahead and turn our transponder to TARA. We are close enough. Brake temperature will be fine. Engine mode as required, which is fine. Unless it starts raining, then we'll turn it on to continuous. Unwave turn off lights on. 
because there is no other traffic here. <laughs> Look, man, you know exactly how much sleep you got last night. Not enough. Give me some slack. Where the crap are my sandals? I have no idea where your sandals are, man. Wherever you put them, wherever you took them off. Man, that's a mom answer or a dad answer if I ever heard one. I am turning into my mother. Go ahead and take an X turn circle view. All right, so nose wheel we can take. Nope, nope. I need my charts. My departure charts aren't really that necessary. I don't know how much sleep I didn't get last night. No, I know that. I just don't know where your sandals are. We're at 24 knots ground speed. We're fine. You can go up to 30. I prefer to keep it under 25. 25, 26, somewhere around there. At C26, I start breaking. We're going to go up to Alpha 1. That's all the way to the end here. Down by the cargo ramp. We're at 25 knots. We better watch out. Might have to break. I mean, I'm going to have to break soon anyway. All right, let's go ahead and turn our landing lights on and our nose wheel light to take off. Because we are just about to make this left onto the runway. ahead and slow down just a touch. We're going to want to take this turn at about seven knots, otherwise we will scare the shit out of our passengers. And I don't want to scare you guys. And then we can get out of Kansas City and head on our way to Dallas Love Field. I know what it looks like, but you gotta remember where the nose wheel gear is on an airplane. While it looks like I'm running clear over it, I'm really not. All right, before takeoff checklist is completed, we're gonna do a rolling takeoff. So let's go ahead and hit our chronos as we turn on to the runway. Stable, flex, our speed is alive, <clears throat> her knots, One, rotate, positive rate, gear up. All 
All right, we are over 2,000 feet. Let's go ahead and turn on autopilot. We're going to retract our spoilers. Press lever to climb. All right. So once we hit... All right, let's get to... What is our VFE? For one, 230 knots. We find to retract. Then at 200 knots, we will retract to zero. Turn on our other radar. All right, be checked, flap zero. And we are on our way. All right, so landing gear is up, ground spoilers are disarmed, nose wheel light and runway turnoff lights can come off. Um, AP1 is on, thrust to the climb detent, flaps retracted per, uh, per procedures. Engine mode is at normal. Engine anti-ice is on is not on because we don't need it. Landing lights can be retracted at 10,000 feet. We are at 6,000 roughly. Um, our altitude is already set to our cruise altitude because we had no restrictions on the way out of Kansas City. To that, by the way, the Racer Seven departure. We're just heading towards Doza. Heading 190. All right. That gives me everything I need for departure, so I can close that and now I just need my rival and approach plate. And I'll need you. Perfect. All right, so how is everybody doing today? Uh, there's not, there, there wasn't this many people here when uh, I first got to ask. Uh, 10,000 feet, we're gonna turn off our landing lights. And now that we're through 10,000 feet, I can actually ask questions like that. We can talk about things that are not aviation related because uh, the United States and indeed most of the world has a law regarding sterile cockpits, which would sound like we need to clean and disinfect everything. However, in reality, uh, that's a relatively new concept since COVID. Um, what sterile cockpit means is we talk about nothing that is not aviation related until we reach 10,000 feet, because that is where the majority of our accidents occur. That's where most people get injured. So, feel free to throw up in chat what you guys have been doing this week, uh, what you have accomplished, and what you're doing with yourselves. What are your plans for the... Um, I ask this for a number of reasons. One, I'm uh, reevaluating my own plans. For yeah, please don't throw up in the chat. Um, we we do not have a cleaning service on this flight. We are Southwest. We we pay for absolutely minimum everything. So there are no comforts here. Stupid amounts of yard work. That is absolutely true. You have told me how much you have done, and holy shit, I would not. I, I'm I'm sorry. Gardens are not that pretty. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. Although the pool, the pool's pretty nice. Uh, that's that's something. The next time I am able to travel, um, that's something I would like to hit up at some point. Because I do not get much of an opportunity to swim, and I love swimming. Fun fact: I love swimming. 
I don't talk about it much. I don't talk about my other hobbies very much. But I love swimming. My wife can confirm if I get in the water, the fight is not to get me to swim. The fight is to get me out of the water. Um, essentially, you don't get me to leave the water. The place with the water closing gets me to leave the water. Um, I don't know why that is. I just, I'm an aquaphile. I love water. I love rain. I love thunder. I, I love lightning. I'm an astrophile. Like, that's just something I love. I love, I love water. I love rain. I love everything about it. And there is a reason why I also love, uh, Petrichor. He's swimming at mom's never closes. Exactly. I would spend the entire week, two weeks, month, however long I'm there, I would spend the entire time in the water. I would spend absolutely the entire time in the water. Not even a question. All right, we are through 18,000 feet, and it's been yelling at me for a while to set standard barrow, which I'm going to do. Uh, we totally blew through that one, and I apologize to the FAA and to everyone watching that might be a more serious pilot. Uh, that was my fault. I was sitting here talking, not looking at my altimeter. But yeah, you'd have to bring me food in the water. Um, I would, I would be swimming all day, every day. I would need a laptop, like, at the edge of the water. Just because I'm not going to stay completely out of touch with everybody. But, yeah, um, I would definitely, definitely need something like that. Um, so, that's going to be the issue if you move in with mom because I guarantee you that's what would happen I would I would be in the water the whole time 100% but yeah I also I, I also read I don't talk about it much, but I do love stories and, and things like that. Uh, kind of if it's a win. Yeah, when I have to leave, that's when I'll get out of the water. <laughs> Not if I get out of the water. I will have to get out of the water at some point, but you know, when is really the operative question. And no, I know what you what you meant. It's, it's not if I get to come up north, it's when. The issue with that comes with the same as always, the money, the, the time, uh, especially if I'm, I'm looking at uh, a change in employment. If I'm doing that, that means that ultimately at some point I am going to have to, um, you know, oh, it's not if I move in with mom, it's when. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's, I did not even catch myself saying that, but, um, uh, but yeah, when, and, and it's a good thing, honestly. Um, like you said, rent's going up, but food's going down. Um, so, can't argue with that. There are benefits to moving in with your mother. There's always benefits to moving in with your mother. Generally speaking, privacy is not one of them. But that's just how it goes. That, that's how we do Man, we are taking forever to climb up to this 38,000. If you want to take a real quick external view, let's do a fly by. I really need to work on my ortho.
That is not doing nothing. Listen, Tolus, I appreciate that you have added a sound. Where's my external? Do we have an external, external volume? In? There we go. Oh, so I appreciate that you gave us this control, but um, please let it interact with V2. I, I would, I would very much appreciate that. All right, so we're almost to the end of our departure. That's Doza. So let's start looking at our arrival. We're going to come from Hitug, which is going to be the next thing after Doza. We don't really have any uh, altitude restrictions. Until we need to be at... Thing, oh, pardon me, not finger. Um, here on track two nine two two nine to slant, then track to the hibble. Uh, and on track two three two, expect radar vectors to a final course. There it is, venue. Venue. We need to be at or below uh, flight level three hundred, and at or above flight level two four zero. see does this have that that up in the flight plan or what what was it venue yeah venue okay so venue or zero perfect that down to watch ourselves cross Doza. And now we're heading towards Hita. 136 nautical miles. We need to be on our 160. Now there's our top of Ascent. Double check everything. We can turn off our wing lights now. We're we're way high up in the air. Nobody needs to see the logos on our wings or on our uh, engines. Technically, I'm also going to turn the dome off. Enunciator lights. We can test them, which I really should be doing during uh, preliminary pre-flight procedures. But I haven't been because it's not in my checklist. I think it's because my checklist was designed to be done quickly and to fit on one piece of paper. Unfortunately, now I'm using a checklist application that doesn't use paper, so it's no longer restricted to that. But I still haven't looked up a more complete uh, procedure checklist. Yes, don't forget, in the United States, you can get bits for free by watching ads. Click the little diamond bits button in chat. It'll be down in the lower right-hand corner. It's actually in your chat bar. Um, and then click on get bits and then watch ads. You'll get between like 5, 15. I've seen as high as like 50 bits for a single ad. Uh, you watch a couple times a day. Uh, they, they usually cut you off pretty quick, but... You know, anything helps, and not just me. You can give those bits to any streamer you like. Uh, obviously, I recommend one in particular, but that's just me. Um, and it is, ironically, also just me. That's who I would suggest. Um, but you can get those for free in the United States. If you are not in the United States, and you do happen to have a VPN, 
you can use your VPN to connect as though you were in the United States and then you can get bits that way. I, I, interestingly enough, you can also use that trick for, um, for like Netflix or Hulu or any other uh, service. If you want a different region's uh, offerings, you can just flip to a different region on a VPN and act as though you were in that country, and then you see that country's offering list. Um, if you get one of those uh, YouTube videos where it says that this content has been uh, disabled in your region, you can fire up a VPN, change to a different region, and then you're safe. You, you, can, you can watch that video, no problems. I'm not sure exactly how that is legal, but they are obviously actually pushing these on ads, uh, pushing this as a feature on ads. And I'm not sure how that's legal, but it must be if they're advertising it, you know, like obviously they're not going to do that if they have been, uh, if there, if there's a legal problem with it. So, at the very least, they've never been called on it. So, I feel pretty safe being able to tell you, hey, uh, if you guys want to do this, you can do this. It'll, it, you know, it's something that works for YouTube, it works for Netflix, it works for Hulu, and it works for getting free bits on Twitch TV. And you can donate them to me, your favorite streamer. And if you are enjoying the, 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 the stream, I know it doesn't look like there's a lot going on. The, the most active times of the stream are during takeoff and landing, um, which we are probably looking at. I think it was an hour and 45 minute flight. We have been in the air for 20 minutes. So we're probably looking at an e a... Estimated time on route is another 40 minutes. It looks like we're, we're running a little bit ahead of schedule. Hello, Angelic Bird. Welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, here we fly airplanes and we play classic games. That's the two things we do. We do them on different days. Flying planes we do every Tuesday from 5 till 7-ish uh, central. I might start opening up a little bit and going a little bit later, go to like 8, that way I can do two 45-minute uh, flights and still have enough time for, you know, start up and shut down, uh, or at least turn around state so that I can, instead of doing these as one flight, uh, front, you know, this is the actually the fourth flight, or third flight in a series, right? We started in Las Vegas, went to Denver, to Kansas City, and now we're heading to Dallas. And I might even add a fourth leg next week. Um, I'm thinking maybe going to Florida. Uh, I'd have to check what what airports I could hit within the two to three hour time, time limit. Uh, but the idea would be to get to a point where we can do two 45 minute flights in one stream that way you get more time of me doing this the the setup the 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 actual takeoff procedures um and more landing uh the landing is really the, the fun part it's the important part uh taking off is pretty easy try to go to kmco kmco where is that i i was actually almost accidentally entered that one today and, oh, that's Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I have gone out of Orlando once. I've never landed at Orlando. Let's see. Can we can we do from KDAL to DMC? Oh. Want something on the Panhandle? Go for uh, El Prizo, Destin, Fort Walton. I 
actually, Orlando works really well if I'm gonna do the, uh, thank you so much for that follow. Uh, yeah, smaller place. Right now, I've been flying the A319, so it can handle some smaller, smaller airports. Um, but if I'm gonna shoot for three hours, then Dallas Love Field to um, to Orlando is two and a half hours, which gives me a half an hour for startup and taxi, which works out really well for me. Um, that's about what it takes is is a half an hour. Or start up taxi and then taxi back in. Um, so if I am looking at adding another hour, that would make a perfect flight for it. Um, and I don't think that we're going to get significantly far enough away from a... Uh, I don't think we're going to get in Florida far enough away from Orlando and closer to Dallas for me to get a two-hour flight from DFW. Well, I'm not in DFW. I'm, I'm in KDAL. So, a much smaller airport. Um, let me let me look on here. I think we're, we're a little bit north of DFW. There's actually small jets that take this this trip, but yeah, it looks like uh, Dallas Fort Worth is actually further away. So that's that's interesting. I'm not sure why it would say that it's. Oh, I'll bet it's because of aircraft type. Where's that uh, K down to KMC? Oh, Let's see, I was looking at a 737. So no, that should be about right. It's showing two hours twenty four minutes for me. Uh, using uh, Lander 5, uh, Fork, uh, Echo Limo Delta, Mike Echo India, Charlie Echo Whiskey, uh, Juliet 2, Defun, Cablo, uh, Oscar Tango Kilo, Piglet 6. What I'm... is the, uh, the routing that I saw for it. I can get the right window open. There we go. So I'm not sure how you got only 90 minutes to Walton Beach. I have a question. Will you do a South American short haul flight like SD Let me take a look at where those take me. On the wrong thing. All right. So you said from SD to GR. So Rio de Janeiro. To Sao Paulo. I think I've actually done Sao Paulo before. Latin America. That's actually on an A319. One hour, five minutes. A little bit short, but if I could get a second flight out of it. Or maybe just do back and forth. To go uh, Rio to Sao Paulo and back to Rio. Trying to remember the flight details, it was a pretty short hop, all in the same time zone. Yeah. Um, I guess, gotta pick up something for mom. Fair enough. That looks, it looks like it'd be a fun fight. And, and flying near Rio would be beautiful if I can get some good scenery for it. Rio is an absolutely beautiful place. SDU, so Sao Paulo. Let me, see. Let me take a look at something. I mean, they flew an A319 into it, so 
it can't be too Yeah, that is Rio. Okay, so let me take a look. Runway 4331. I do not see. Uh, okay, landing distance is forty-seven fifty-eight, and neither one of them can support that. How did they land one here? I am very curious how they landed. Let's use a short runway with short runways, yeah. Huh. Full brakes and reversers. Yeah, but that's below the minimum distance. Like, the minimum braking distance for the A319 is 4758 feet, and the longest air, the longest runway here is 4331. So, you could only do it in, in, in dry weather. Um... Yeah, you, you have to land in dry weather, max brakes, um, full reversers, just immediate full reversers, and hold them until you get under 80. And if you if you float at all, you're done. You need to go around. Yeah, you you you'd almost have to have a headwind, which you always try to land with a headwind. I mean, that's, that's just normal. Thank you. Um, so you'd want a headwind. Uh, I don't know that you can count on too high of a headwind. You definitely want to already be at your, at, at your minimum, um, almost at your stall speed when, you're, when your gear touches down, which... Again, is normal, but you're going to want to actually come down hard so that you absorb more of the energy through vertical movement than horizontal. Um, you're going to have to hit max brakes and full reversers. Not sure that there's much else you can do. Um... But yeah, that's got to be a procedure. I don't, I don't know how exactly you do that. I, I'd love to try it. So I'm probably going to set that flight up sometime this week and try it out because that seems like a really fun landing. Uh, similarly, I took, I, I, I landed a couple of months ago at, uh, I think it's called Lake Lakeview or Lakefield Airport. Um, which had a smaller runway. I, I didn't check. I could definitely ch take off SU. I I I'd, I'd kind of like to go um, and do a lap, right? Go from SDU to GR to SDU. Oh, and take off GRU to gig. Okay, hold up. I'm actually going to snip that, and I'm going to put this in our flight direct or our, our flight suggestions. So there is a Discord if you hit exc exclamation point Discord. And I'm going to post this in here um, so I can vet the uh, the route and make sure that everything looks good. 
uh, and that I can do the flights. Because uh, the last thing I want to do is come at it so totally blind in a situation where I know we're under minimums. Um, but yeah, if you have cool ideas for flights like that, I would be so appreciative if you could throw that in our Discord um, under the, the uh, Flight Suggestions channel. All right, we're about to join our approach, uh, or our star, our standard arrival. But, um, but yeah, if you have ideas for cool stuff like that, I would love to fly them. Um, I do this every Tuesday. I'll put that right now. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and that should, yeah, I would love to be able to try it. I'm going to, I'm going to. Practice the flight probably this weekend. Uh, just try landing at, S at SDU, was it? Yeah, SDU. I'm going to try landing at SDU and see how that goes. Because there's definitely an A319 that took out that, that took off out of there. Um, what was I looking at? Oh, come on. Back to flight aware. SDU. U. BRU. Apollo. And I definitely see an A319 took off, a Latin America 319 took off from Rio, landed in Sao Paulo. Um, so that should be flyable. Or no, it took off from Rio. But that means it had to arrive in Rio somehow. But yeah, that should definitely be possible. I just have to practice it so that I don't, you know, kill the plane. Yeah, what I can do is fly, fly uh, Rio, Sao Paulo... Apollo Rio, and then if I can't land, I can divert to, uh, I don't know where Dig is, but, um, yeah, I'm sure it's possible, I'm not sure if it's in my wheelhouse, I have tried, I have, I have flown Innsbruck, but I didn't do it quite right, but I did manage to land safely. Um, I just didn't make the circle to land very well. Uh, I made the circle to land at McKinnon. So, uh, I have done some interesting procedures, but I don't know that I'd be able to know how to land at such a short runway. Uh, I tried doing that in, um, Narsuswek in, uh, Greenland. I think it was. And <laughs> I overran the end of the runway and wound up in the water. Um, I think I, I think there was some icing conditions that caused me to take too long to land. Plus, I was doing it at night. I couldn't see the runway. Um, that was a fun. That was a fun approach. But uh, I definitely killed the plane. Uh, I would not be invited back to that particular. As a matter of fact, I think I would I would very definitely be invited not to return to that job. That airline would not be happy. All right, so we are not far away from our top of descent. We're at about 70, or no, oh, I'm sorry, about 55 nautical miles away. I also love the fact that on this procedure, on this approach, we go through rubber chicken. We go through rubber chicken. And we repay Cuban fingers. And don't don't ask me to explain it. That's just how they fly it. They they name these these uh, particular waypoints and that rubber chicken R U B B R and C H C K N. And then later on, we will have a uh, venue and then repay 
R E P A Y. Um, Cuban, C U B A N, and Finger, F I N G R. That's going to be an interesting uh, set of waypoints to be flying past. Go ahead and look under us. Actually, it does look very pretty. For being autogen, because I do not have any. Um, I don't have any ortho here. I don't have any uh, scenery. I wish I did, uh, and if I had been planning this particular flight, I would have gotten at very least some uh, Dallas Hart, uh, Dallas Love Airfield um, scenery, if I could find it. But this was kind of a last-minute decision because of the weather that we had here in Kansas City. Um, Speaking of which, fun facts. Today we flew out of Kansas City. We're heading towards Dallas. Um, I live in Kansas City. I have my whole life. Um, so we were flying out of my home airport. And that's why I was so familiar with the, the layout and everything. This is my home airfield. Uh, where we're going, I have never been. I've never actually been to Texas. I'd love to go sometime. But right now, all of my spare time that I'm allowed to travel, I'm heading up north to Canada. Um, because that is where my wife is, who you saw earlier. She had to leave. Um, she's going to get things for mom. But uh, she lives in Canada. So I, I do most of my offline flights when I'm not streaming are between... Uh, they're between KMCI and CYYZ uh, for Lester B. Pearson International. Because that's how I fly to get to and from my wife's place. Unfortunately, we have not been able to see each other this year um, because of obvious reasons. COVID causing problems, being a pain in the ass. Um, starting trouble everywhere. But yeah, um, if you are enjoying the stream, which Angelic actually uh, obviously is, hit the follow button. If you want to say it with a little bass in your voice, hit the subscribe button. Uh, all, most if not all of the income from the stream, I put back into the stream. So if you, if you donate $5 here, $10 here, it's going to go back into the stream, into making the stream better. Um, next thing we're looking at is probably some rudder pedals. Uh, maybe for the other nights I might be trying to pick up some scary games so you guys can hear and see and possibly see me also panic and freak out because uh, I don't deal well with horror. Uh, <laughs> But um, recently, with the Steam Summer st Sale, you've seen um, the entire Freddy's Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has gone on deep discount. We're talking like two dollars a game. Um, so I'm I'm thinking about that. I'm also thinking about doing some uh, City Skylines. I haven't m decided to pull that trigger yet because I'm not really familiar with the game. I I've played it. But I'm not really familiar with all the bits and pieces that I have that are available to me. So um, I'd like to have some familiarity with what I'm doing before I do it. All right, so it looks like we're getting awful, awful, awful close. Yep, it wants our destination data. So let's switch this up to 122.3. Thank you, Sim Toolkit Pro. This is Dallas Love Information X-Ray. 2314 Zulu. Visibility 10. Temperature 33. Dew point 21. Wind 180 at 13. Altimeter 2978. Advise you have information X ray. End of information X ray. Perfect. This is Dallas Love Information X ray. Shut up. 2314 Zulu. Don't need you. Visibility one zero. See if we can pull our descent wind. Not yet. 
Okay, so let's descend to 240. That ready to be plugged in. Then at about 10 miles till, I'll go ahead and hit that button. Which we have passed. So let's go ahead and hit that button. Give the bus plenty of time to descend. We're on descent now into... We, where are we? We are at rubber. We are before rubber, I should say. By about 30 miles. And then we're going to hang a right towards chicken. I'm actually really excited about this. I think this is a, a little bit of a circle to land. I don't have a long final, I think. I think I've got about, about a three mile final. Three or five miles, something like that. By the time I finish circling. Not a true circle to land, but most of my approach will be done circling. Then once we cross venue, we need to be at 9,000 for finger. Here comes our descent profile coming down to us, at which point the bus will descend a little faster in order to keep with it. The Airbus is a shockingly intelligent airplane. Um, and this allows me to kind of keep an eye on what's going on up here. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of things that I should do. So normally, uh, during cruise, you'd be checking on the ECAM here. Um, there'd be a lot of things going on here. I haven't been doing that. I'm not going to do that um, because I don't have any failures on. Now, if I had failures on, uh, I would definitely be checking this consistently. I just wish that there weren't... If you turn on failures at all, failures happen all the time. There's no in-between. So, since I don't want failures to be constant, I can't turn them on at all. Uh, if I find a way to turn on failures in a way that it doesn't uh, obstruct the stream then I'll probably be happy to do that uh, and I will be paying more attention to the status window on the ecam all right so we are still a little under our descent profile and it looks like we're descending a little fast that's fine our vertical deviation 40 30 feet yeah no worries as long as we're not like 100 feet or 200 feet off the profile, we're fine. <clears throat> also, fun news. Uh, Thrustmaster recently um, released the TCA Side Stick Airbus Edition. And this is an actual, like, replica level model of the side stick in the Airbus. And from all the re the uh, reports that I've seen, it is shockingly accurate. It is... Um, it makes it surprisingly smooth. Like, it's not just the internals, because the internals are the same as on the uh, Thrustmaster T-16,000M. 16, uh, 16, so the internals are exactly the same, but just the shape of the grip of the stick helps and 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 the resting position of it helps to keep the um to keep the aircraft more under control it's a more natural position where um this the stick that i'm using right now which is a very cheap stick. Let me just be clear. This was not my ideal stick. I was not planning on streaming with this. 
Uh, this is just what I picked up when I was first interested in Flight Sim. I have the Thrustmaster um, T-Flight HOTUS X. It is a garbage controller, but it has lasted me for like 10 years now, I want to say. No, not 10. Lasted me about six or seven years with no problems. And this is with some significant amounts of neglect. So I am very, very impressed with my Thrustmaster. Um, and this is not useless, it's just not good. So if we're being clear, it's not good, it's not bad, but it's not good. The T16000M was going to be my next upgrade, but now that they have the Airbus side stick, I would much rather have that, especially since I primarily fly Airbus. Um, so I'd, I'd like to, to, to buy that, and also the uh, throttle quadrant. And then eventually they're adding another add-on to that that slips around the outside of the throttle quadrant. Also, the um, the side stick that they sell has detachable side pieces so that you can switch which side does what. So you can fly it either in a first officer or a captain configuration. Which was something I did not expect. I expected them to kind of pick a side and stick with it. But they they didn't. They decided to go full out. It, it detaches the autopilot disconnect button and the hat switch. No, not the hat switch. I can't remember what it's got on the right side uh, in first officer configuration. But those detach and you can switch them. They've got, uh, so there's four connectors. One that goes on either side. Um, and you can even put both black or both red connectors on. Uh, so you can basically make it look however you want. If you're looking here, um, this piece here disconnects and can be connected over here so that it would look like that stick. Now they also have an additional button over here. I'm not sure what it's for. It's not modeled here in this aircraft. So I'm not sure what it's for. I'm not sure what it's on. It may be a real part of certain Airbuses. But it is not on this 319 by Tolis. So I can't really say much about it. So we're already in the clear for uh, Venue. Because we are below flight level 300. Um, and we need to hit Venue at flight level 240. It might just want to keep functionality up so it doesn't go below the base number of buttons on the T16000M. Yeah. Um, although it already does, I think, have more buttons. I think. I'm not certain. Another cool feature of it, though, is it does have the Z-axis blocker. So that uh, if you have pedals, which right now I do not have pedals and I regret not having pedals. Um... It would be much easier to be able to control the aircraft on descent if I had rudder pedals. Because right now I have to deflect the Z-axis of my um, my flight stick, which makes me tend to fly off my my glide path. <clears throat> I wind up rolling instead, and that's really not good, especially for crosswind landing. <clears throat> That's why I'm kind of expecting a little bit of a rough landing here in DFW or uh, in Dow in in Dallas Love Love Field. <clears> okay. <throat> hey. But we're past venue. We need to go down to 9,000. And we're past the restriction. You can also see how it didn't actually change my uh, 
Ooh, we're getting some frame rate issues. Not crash, please. Um, you can see how it's stuck at the 24,000 feet. That's because the Airbus is smart enough to know that there were constraints that I could not go below. And it said no. I was sitting there, hey, it'd be really cool if you went down to 9,000 feet. And it was like, eh, no, there's a constraint here. So I'm going to stick here until we pass the constraint. Thank you, Airbus. All right, so landing elevation is set to auto. Make do arrivals, performance approach, all good. Uh, wind being a pain in the ass. Nothing I can do about it. Uh, FC altitude set and push. Speed break half as required. We don't need an altitude set. QNH at flight level 180. So we're going to have our. Twenty nine seventy eight. Let's go ahead and set that. We don't. It's not terribly bad if we set it early. Go ahead and get it out of the way. That's gonna be Pascal. I don't know. Perfect. All right. So altimeter is set. Landing lights can come on at 10,000 feet and not one minute before. That one will hurt us if we turn on our lights early. Handy data to constraints, which I've already done. Uh, FCU LS as required, which won't really matter until we get packing close to the airport. Okay, so we are at... We're almost to repack. Twenty miles, so we're thirteen miles away from uh, venue, and you can tell I'm made for this. I would love to fly professionally, uh, and I am made for this because I have the uhs down. I can put an uh in anywhere while I'm looking at data. And for the record, for those of you who don't know anything about aviation, that's why the uhs exist. Is because they're checking things, they're going through procedures and checklists, and they're uh, looking up weather reports, and they're briefing their their charts, all while giving you your your speech. So while they're saying that you need to keep, uh, you know, that the the flight attendants will tell you where you're going to be exiting, and what the weather is like in Dallas. Um, while they're doing that, they're actually looking that stuff up. So sometimes their brain just has to slow down. or The brain has to speed up. The mouth has to slow down so that they don't overrun one into the other. Um, so, like, if I was going to be giving proper briefings right now, I don't know exactly what we would be winding up saying. But um, I could jump on AirNav to look up data. We're going to be going to KDAL. So I'd be saying, you know, uh, you'll, we'll be landing in 20 minutes at Dallas Love Field. The weather in... Oh, wait, it's going to be on the end. Sorry. Uh, the weather is going to be 33 degrees with a dew point of 21. Uh, looks like there's going to be a little bit of scattered clouds. Wind is going to be 13 knots gusting, 26. So you're looking at some pretty gusty winds. Um, and then it looks like here soon, uh, you're going to have a little bit stronger wind coming. And I think it's a chance of rain. I, I haven't learned all the Metar symbols yet. I'm doing pretty good. But you've got great visibility, um, just some cloud cover. It's nice and hot, um, but but it is cloudy, so you'll probably not have any problems with too much sun. Got something on my on it. I don't know how to clean. Feels like it's actually like stuck in in the screen. That's not ideal. 
All right, so this is where things start getting quicker. We're going to need to make 9,000 by finger. Cool. Let me look at approach plate. If I went up, just need to hit 2,000 by hexa, or 2,100 by hexa. That's going to be my next checkpoint after I hit uh, what is this? Finger. After finger, I'm going to go down to 2100. Right? I don't have hmm, 2300. Yeah, and I won't hit 2300 that soon. But yeah, as long as I don't go below 2300 before slant, we'll be fine. Which we definitely won't. What sound does a 737 make when it bounces on landing? I'd imagine there's a lot of shake and rattle. Um, it depends on if they decide to do a go around, because if, if they do, you'll probably hear a nice roar. If it was an Airbus, you, you'd hear a whine. Um, but if they're not executing a go around, yeah, you're going to. You're gonna hit hard. You're gonna. You're gonna. Hit. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting here taking you seriously, and you got a pun for me. You you can go to pun jail. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was good. I can respect that. <laughs> and see, the funny thing is, you wouldn't know this, but I actually have a fairly good sense of humor. But when people start talking about things where, where they're they're curious about actual aviation stuff, I go full nerd on it and forget that they can get thee to a punnery. Yeah. Um, I forget that it can just be jokes. <laughs> but I really do appreciate the jokes and and uh If this was if this was not while I'm flying on a stream, I probably would have picked up on that. I think I told that joke a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you gotta have humor. You really do. Um, and right now, they're all escaping me. Um, <laughs> partially because... So I got I got some bad news this week. My, my job is uh, very much in danger. It, it might be going away. I mean, over time, it probably definitely is going to go away. Um, my boss is going to wind up trying to do the job all by himself, at which point he's going to realize just how much I've been doing, um, and how much stuff I'm not giving him. Like, uh, I, I worked on my own time on a, uh, spreadsheet to figure payroll taxes. That's something I'm not going to give away for free. So he's going to have to pay somebody to figure his payroll. Um... You know, he, he's, he's, but anyway, over time, my, I'm being phased out of my job, so I have to find new employment, um, which makes stress go up, makes my, uh, humor go down. Very unfortunate things, all very, very unfortunate things, but what can you do? I mean, you know, I'm here. And I like to think I'm at least having fun with you guys. Uh, if I'm not being entertaining, if I'm not being fun, let me know. I would rather, you know, skip a week, skip a couple days, than to put you guys through something if it's not feeling fun, if you're not enjoying yourselves. Um, I'd rather lose out on the income, I'd rather lose out on the money, than to provide you guys with a substandard product, right? This is your stream. This is your show. And I don't want you guys to feel ripped off. You feel me? 
All right, so we are under 10,000. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our landing lights. Once we get past Finger, I'll be able to go down to 2100. Okay, so we crossed that right at 9,000, and we were just descending the entire time. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. It looks like our throttles are coming up a little bit because we are descending a little bit faster than we want to here. And it looks like it's holding our altitude. I'm not sure why. It's giving us a minimum of 3,000. I'm not sure why. Our minimum here should be 2,300. But it'll go down after slant. <clears throat> hey, thank you so much for those five bits, Angelic Bird. I know it doesn't seem like much, but... It, every bit adds up. Um, you'd be surprised. In the first couple of months that I was streaming with Affiliate, I actually made more money off of bits than I did off of subs and donations combined. So even, e even just little five bits here and there, it absolutely adds up. Do not underestimate it. Thank you so, so much for throwing those bits at my face. Because, um, and I just, I, I, I just want to reiterate, I hope you didn't buy them not because i don't want you to buy things but because uh they overcharge really badly for hey it absolutely helps i do not want i have seen streams and this is why i, I pointed out so much i have seen streams where people are like oh it's just five bits what you can't afford no look any money that somebody puts forward towards this stream towards this dumb shit that i do like that's just crazy. Yeah, watching an ad. Good. Because they, they charge like, I, I want to say it's like $1.70 for 100 bits. I mean, obviously, they, they discount it the more you buy at a time, but um, the, the, the price that they charge for bits is ridiculous. And um, I wouldn't want to feel like they were ripping you off like that. Um, I definitely don't want that. Because I care about you guys. I don't want you to... Um, okay, we have to intercept went up at 3,000. And then we can go down to Hexov at 2,100. That's why it's giving me the 3,000. Um, but yeah, I don't want Twitch ripping you guys off. I would rather make less money than have Twitch rip you guys off. So yeah, watching ads is a perfect way to get bits. Uh, other than that, like I, I, I would... There's also a research group that uh, that that rewards in bits, uh, the Twitch RPG. So feel free to sign up for that, and then if they ever get uh, people that want research done on Twitch, uh, they do reward in bits, usually to the tune of two to six hundred. So I mean, it's two to six dollars for a fifteen-minute uh, questionnaire. So you're gonna want to go to I think it's rpg.twitch.com or twitch.tv hold on let me let me check yeah yeah it's gonna be rpg.twitch.tv and it looks like they are definitely still doing it let me throw that here you can sign up there they don't give anything to do very often but they do do it um, I've gotten probably 10, 20 bucks worth of, of, uh, bits out of them, which means that my favorite streamers have gotten 10 to $20 worth of bits from it, which I think is definitely a good thing. I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's necessarily enough. I think that they are still kind of shortchanging people, but I mean, it's 15 minutes of your time. You get 10 bucks worth of, of, of bits. Uh, 
which you have to give to a streamer. You like you can't give it to yourself. So, you know, I think that it's I think it's worth doing, but I think that they're undervaluing it a little bit. Uh, but I do understand why. But yeah, all things that you can do to help your favorite streamers, and it costs nothing, just time. Um, so I, I always suggest that to people, and it's not just for me. I think that it's it's a benefit to Twitch as a whole, and it, it gives you the flexibility to be able to thank your favorite streamers without doing anything. Also, if you have... Uh, if you have... Amazon Prime, then you also have a free Twitch sub. All you have to do is fill out the um, the connecting. You have to connect your two accounts. Once you do that, you have a free sub that you can throw every month. You do have to renew it manually. It doesn't automatically, it, like you don't select, this is the channel that I want my free sub to go to, and then it just goes to them every month. Every month, you have to actually hit the continue sub button. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. All right, so we're coming in towards Exa, which we need to be at 2100 plus. I'm going to go ahead and turn on our landing system. Be dev. We are under glide slope. Why are we so far under glide slope? Airplane, what are you doing? All right, under speed check, let's do flaps one. FCU approach when both are tuned. We should be looking at some pretty wicked crosswind right now. Get under 200, then I'll put out flaps two. Looks like we are under 200. Flaps two. Go ahead and drop our gear. Just to help us slow down a little bit. 174, flaps three. Under 180, flaps four. Flaps full. And then the airplane will continue to decelerate. We are getting some pretty bad gusting winds. But hopefully we'll still be able to land relatively safely. So I can't sign up due to maintenance. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, when it when it opens, it's been it's been great. They don't contact me very often, but when they do, I usually get a pretty decent little reward that I get to throw to my favorite streamers, and I think that that's a very good thing. We don't... Our deviation is very small. Shut up. Stop screaming at me. Okay. So... Approach when ILS is tuned. The ILS is tuned. Let's turn on approach mode. Okay, we are too high. Let's go down about 600 feet per minute. Get our lights on. Spoilers need to be armed. Thank you, Ecam. mode. Let's get autopilots on. Okay, the 
And as soon as this lines up and we're below the glide path, auto brake. We're going to set auto brake low. plane. Climb. We're gonna we're gonna do a go around. Okay, let's get up to three thousand. So we're going to go up to 3,000, then we're going to turn around and go back to Nokime. Let's see, where's Winop? Let's direct back to Winop. So we're going to go win up Hex of Leech. So let's gear up. Get our laps retracted. Turn off our landing system. That was a very sketchy landing. So, um, we're at 3,000, which will be fine. I'm gonna circle back around to Winop. Then after Winop, we'll go back down to 2,100. And this time I might just expedite it. We also need to it approach so that it brings down my speed.
All right. I apologize for being a little quiet. I am below 10,000 feet. So I'm trying to at least somewhat pay attention to the... Uh, the rules. Go ahead and turn on the landing system. So I can see when my everything works. Okay. Down to 2100. Start throwing out some spoilers. Drop my gear. Flaps two. Flaps three, speed checked. Flaps three. Flaps full. So we need to expedite this. We need to get down to 2100. should be a little bit better. We're, we're up a good three, four hundred feet lower than we were last time. And so now we're on final approach. The wind seems to be a little calmer. Quartering right crosswind. Let's go ahead and put this up to three thousand in case we have to do another go around. Way too early. Way too early. Manual 
breaking. That would have broken people's backs. No, not quite, but it was really bad. Kick him into balls! <laughs> that is actually my roommate making that sound effect. All right. So, let's get turned around here. Tracked our flaps. Disarm our speed brakes. Ending lights off. Our rollout checklist, ground spoilers are disarmed, landing lights are off, engine mode is on normal, flaps are retracted, APU master on. APU start when available, train on ND off, which it is. And brake fan on, the brakes are probably a little hot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them on, even though I can't tell for sure if they're needed. Because I need to be watching the APU for that message. And then I can switch over to wheels, which actually they look good. I'm surprised. I'm quite surprised. Alright, so... Uh, there shouldn't be an FX man. Um, at least not that I recall. Alright, let me get my terminal chart. I do just have a section of my my uh, rotator up there that has effects on it. Um, but there's not a command to like list them. I probably should make that. All right, let's go ahead and turn in here. I don't think I have auto gate here. Just gonna have to kind of guess. Didn't mean to full stop there. Let's check that. I'm pretty sure we're close. Oh! Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. That is right on the marks. The jetway is right in front of my door, although it's at the wrong elevation because fuck me. However, that puts us here. Um... Park brake pressure should be green. Everything looks good. Uh, Anti-ice is off. APU bleed set on. Engine 1 and 2 master off. Runway turn off lights off. Which I already had off. I'm not sure why. Uh, runway turn off lights off. Wing lights off. Nav and logo off. Uh, beacon off. Seat belts off, elapsed time stop. At one hour and 33 minutes, we are, I think, 14 minutes ahead of schedule. All right, pumps off. 
Transponder set to standby. McDo's dimmed. Brake fan off. That's parking checklist complete. Securing the aircraft. Park brake check on. Adhere's set to off. External lights all off. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit light off. No smoking off. Battery one and two off. Welcome everybody to Dallas Love Field. Thank you guys so much for being here today and for enjoying the stream. I hope you have. Uh, my name is Rack Attack. Um, also known as Sean, I don't really care what name people use for me. I do flights every Tuesday, every single week on, uh, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time till right around 7, maybe next week 8, who knows? Uh, and then on Wednesday and Friday, we do classic style RPG games. Uh, lately, we've been doing Trials of Mana since it came out a couple of months ago on Steam in a remake, uh, which is actually, I think, its first U.S. appearance. Um, so we've been playing that. We're also looking at maybe doing some City Skylines and, um, you know, maybe some horror games. We'll, we'll find out. So anyway, thank you guys so, so much for being here uh, and watching me absolutely pancake this airplane. Uh, probably destroyed a tire or two. Um, yeah, that was not a good landing. That was really bad. I should have gone around. I think I probably caught a wind gust that kept me a little high. Uh, and I definitely closed my uh, throttles a little too soon. Because uh, I think I closed them at about 50 feet and I should have closed them closer to uh, 30. 30 or 20. So anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed. Please feel free to visit the Discord. Let me know what you guys think and throw uh, some information in there if you want uh, a, a specific flight. I would be happy to do it for you as long as it fits within the scope of the stream. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening.